Next, we will use the graphic method to solve the problem. We draw the graphs of F1 tile and F2 T minus tile both. Firstly, the graph of F1 tile is like this. Then we draw the graph of F2 T minus tile. Firstly, the simplest condition is when t equals 0. The function equals f2 minus tau, and its graph is like this. You can think about this question. With t increase from 0 to a positive value, what direction will the graph of f2 t minus tau move toward? Yes, it moves to the right. This is the graph at time t. Then we can use the graph to observe the upper and the lower limits of the convolution integral. You see, f1 tau has non-zero value when tau is between 0 and 1. f2 t minus tau has non-zero value when tau is less than t. We should focus on an important point, whether t is less than 1 or greater than 1. If t is less than 1, then obviously the region that both functions have non-zero values is from 0 to t. So when 0 is less than t and less than 1, the limits of the integral is from 0 to t. The integral of 1 times e to the power of minus t minus tau d tau equals e to the power of minus t times the integral of e to the power of tau d tau equals 1 minus e to the power of minus t. Secondly, t is greater than 1. From the graph of the function, we know that f1 tau equals 0 when t is greater than 1. So the limits of the integral is from 0 to 1. You can find with this graphic method, we can easily determine the upper and the lower limit of the integral. Besides, we can also find that in this convolution graphic method, one waveform convolutes along the vertical axis and then moves, and the limits of the integral is determined by the overlapping area of the two graphs. This is a key reason for the convolution integral's name. You can compare the two methods. Of course, their conclusions are absolutely the same. In the first method, the valid regions of different epsilon tau are used to determine the limits of the integral. In the second method, the graphs of the functions are used to determine the limits of the integral. Obviously, the second method has its advantage. F1 convolutes F2 here. According to the commutative law, it equals F2 convolutes F1. We hope you to calculate F2 convolutes F1 with both the left and the right method respectively. You should get the same feeling for the degree of difficulty. Well, this is the end of this lecture.